so when I was invited to speak uh, or be a panel member at uh, the UN General Assembly week, uh, it was a pleasant surprise for me. At the same time, I guess it's also a clear reflection of the kind of work that we're doing in making a positive impact on people's lives. That's exactly what the SDGs or the Sustainable Development uh, Goals are all about. The focus of the UN and the governmental bodies on making a positive impact on people's lives, at least is clearly understood that one of the biggest enablers or biggest facilitators uh, would be technology and uh, really we're living in the so-called digital age. Clear acknowledgement that that is really going to uh, be the driver and facilitator for improvement of uh, people's lives. Two points that caught my attention for that matter. One being that we are in the slowest pace of development in, context, in the context of technology. Well, you may think that we are moving at a very rapid pace. If you were to look at the thousands of years of uh, human existence, it really resonates what what he had said. But the other one, I think, which is very relevant in the context of what we are trying to achieve right now, is that once the technology is launched, people would want to kind of look at an impact overnight. That is never going to happen. There's always an inflection point. What we talk about, uh, you know, there are going to be early adopters, the so-called innovators, and we get to the adopters. And then you get an inflection point and the whole uh, service, whichever is offered, takes off. When I launched mobile banking in some 2007, uh, we thought in a year, we'll have a couple of million customers doing everything. And then we went to the pains. We had only a couple of hundred thousand customers uh, at, at the bank I was working for. And then everybody thought maybe mobile is dead. But what we didn't realize is that every technology uh, really can, you know, needs and uh, has its own inflection curve. But the minute it hit in say four to five years, now mobile device is ubiquitous. It's about everybody does most of the transactions. I'm talking about the financial side uh, through the mobile device. So I guess it's about really waiting for that inflection point and that's very important when people and the governments look at making an impact in various programs that they're undertaking and not look for an instant, uh, we, we live in, an in, in the world of instant gratification. So I guess that's something that we need to look at. Africa is really leading the way in the context of financial inclusion and the usage and adoption of mobile that everything that happens in Africa, and I may not be exaggerating when I say uh, from cradle to grave, uh, every transaction that happens today in the context of financial services uh, is to the mobile device. So the mobile money has really made a huge uh, difference where there is no banking services, come the telecom operators, come the mobile device, the combination of a fantastic distribution network coupled with ubiquitous mobile device in the hands of customers suddenly kind of uh, brought in a mobile payment revolution. So unless there's a will from the government, the will from the people and the stakeholders involved, I do not think anything is going to make a difference and I think that's uh, quite uh, understandable if you were to look at the Africa example. If you were to look at gender equality, the SDG 5, uh, EcoCash uh, uh, has enabled what's called uh, the EcoCash Savings Club where women folk come together, contribute to funds and uh, they loan to each other to ensure that they are able to kind of make a livelihood. So it's like, if, if I may, in the context of India, what, what are called the chit funds. And we've seen such a big success that a lot of women folk have been able to kind of empower themselves, employ themselves, and suddenly their well-being can be clearly looked at, their income levels going up. So that's an interesting uh, uh, data point. Coming from India and seeing a lot of transformations, uh, and India is a big success story with a billion plus population, making such significant strides uh, in the context of uh, making people's lives better. Uh, it's about ease of living, whatever we kind of hear, but the number of SDGs, I believe something like 10 to 12 SDGs are impacted now with the digital transformation that the government is uh, uh, doing. And the seriousness at which it, they're kind of uh, taking some of the steps is something to be really proud about. Uh, I personally have been involved in a few initiatives. I talked about mobile banking, uh, what is now known as UPI, which is uh, earlier of that being IMPS, really brought in what is called instant peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transfers using just a mobile number or any other identifier to customers 24 bar 7, which was the first time in the world that across banks, 
people could transfer small uh, payments and, and get that real time. After uh, the new government came in in 2014, the focus on opening what's called the Jandan accounts uh, really made a big difference because from a banked population of around 40% going all the way to 90%, uh, or actually I'm told it's close to 100% now, could not have happened if the will of the government was not there of ensuring that everybody is targeted and uh, uh, in, you know, is given a bank account. What it has done here is, one, taken off the whole transmission losses and we know how big transmission losses in emerging markets are. Uh, it's something like 15 to 20 billion dollars of uh, money that would have been unaccounted for has suddenly been uh, wiped out and that's the saving that the government has been able to get. Beneficiary has been identified, the money gets in near real time. The best example is Ujwala scheme where gas cylinders are given to women folk, uh, something like uh, 80 million uh, households uh, now being covered. This year, between UPI and INPS put together, I am estimating something like $300 billion of money throughput would be going through these two schemes. That would mean real-time transfers, uh, uh, the cost uh, of cash, which people really never uh, realize, uh, is kind of saved. The frauds uh, are kind of uh, taken away. So significant strides, uh, it's still a long way to kind of uh, move forward, but I believe we are in the right direction. The impact that we as Comviva have been able to achieve uh, in the context of the uh, sustainable development goals, the nuances of the market is something that we've been able to kind of uh, capture. Working with various uh, service providers uh, across these geographies, what we've been able to kind of really make a difference uh, is the way people go about working in their normal lives and uh, at the same time benefiting from uh, the organized financial services. If I were to look at Cambodia, uh, a lot of these women folk who work in textile uh, industries uh, used to get cash and uh, you know what happens a lot of times that's kind of taken away by the men folk uh, for whatever purposes. Uh, suddenly uh, with the uh, accounts being uh, provided to the women and the salaries being disbursed uh, to their accounts straight, they had a little more control of what they were doing. Uh, that really brings in women's empowerment and we can't just underplay uh, the whole uh, transformation that's been happening across the globe. If I were to look at Afghanistan, a lot of uh, policemen who were getting salaries at cash and a lot of them didn't realize what their actual salary was. Again, transmission losses. So when we kind of worked along with the service provider to ensure that the salaries are disbursed uh, to the uh, policemen's um, accounts, most of the police uh, folk, uh, pol the officials thought they got a raise as high as 30 percent and that's the amount of uh, transmission laws we are talking about. Orange, one of our customers, is working Pan-Africa, something like seven odd countries, where they uh, finance solar lanterns, clean energy, and ensure that that's kind of paid in, in EMIs so that the burden for uh, the common man uh, is kind of reduced. And what they do is that the, uh, the solar lantern is kind of charged through the mobile money account. So as long as you pay, you enjoy the benefits of uh, lighting. And it's such an innovative mechanism by which uh, uh, it's been a huge uh, difference. We won two, uh, two years running uh, at the GSMA, the Glomo Awards, two awards. Uh, just to showcase the benefit that we've kind of made or the significant uh, impact that we've made in the economy is quite interesting, especially if you were to con consider that the, the country just had no cash. Everything was dollarized and the dollars is something that you would never want to touch. If you touch those uh, cash, those uh, currency notes of dollars, probably you would just need a dis disinfectant to clean your hands because they were so dirty. Uh, if I were to cut across to Colombia, the whole economy uh, uh, is now kind of really moving uh, upward and uh, the impact that we're kind of trying to create is enable a huge distribution network by which customers are able to uh, access their uh, accounts but more importantly bring an e-commerce revolution uh, in the country because uh, Colombia is inching or nudging towards the middle economy status and trying to kind of uh, enable digital payments and uh, commerce is something that's, that's kind of really going to change the way uh, the country is going to uh, uh, work uh, in the coming for a few months and uh, years. Uh, the best way I want to kind of uh, talk about and I really hope uh, the United Nations looks at this as saying from 
eliminating or eradicating poverty, which is the SDG 1, I hope that they're going to come out with the last SDG, which is talking about wealth inclusion. What I mean by that is that in the coming few years, probably four to five, the whole world's eliminating poverty, uh, then why not focus on the next thing about saying everybody should be wealthy. So the wealth inclusion concept I think is quite interesting and important and a lot of initiatives happening there. Probably that's for a, uh, a discussion for a separate day. But I think that's uh, hopefully one of the SDGs that they kind of look at and that the truly would be the day when I believe we would have achieved utopia.